All right, I'm up to step 15. So we've got a piece of glass. I've got a piece of glass for this because this has to be flat. So my understanding of the instructions is we're looking for <coughs> we're looking for the carbon strip to be flush with the one side, the bottom side of the timber. So you'll get that step. Uh, get that step. There we go, like that. So um, I've used this freezer film. If you've seen any other my building stuff, this is uh, a staple in my workshop. Um, if, you're, if you're working with any kind of adhesives, nothing sticks to it. It's brilliant. You need to make composite joiner boxes over over joiner bars. A couple of wraps of this. Success every time. All right. So I'm pushing down with both. <clears throat> pushing down on both the carbon and the balsa and a little tack a little tack spot let that sit for a second you can move along and do another one Always pushing down on both onto the glass. I'm out of sight, aren't I? So to speak. Let's try that again. Okay, so that should be ready for I am using thin, right? Yep. Where is this thing? There we go. Okay, so that should be long enough. Now I should be able to just go through and put a a bead of CA along here, make sure it's all stuck. So you get an angle on that step there. And then we go and stick your finger to it. Good on you, Dave. Well done. Yeah, still got a bit of... Oh, I might have overdone it with the CA. <laughs> okay, just pour it out of the bottle. Capillary action. Probably a little bit of a build-up on these where I tacked it as well because it's now double thickness. So I might just give that a scrape with a razor blade. Make sure we don't have too much of a glue build up on the carbon strip and the idea of that if I'm not mistaken then we'll go over the top of just like that look at that It's almost like it was planned that way. I mean, that's seriously cool. All right, we'll get 15 done and then move on to 16. Not knowing exactly how good this has to be, I'm actually going across the whole carbon strip with the uh, razor blade in a vertical grain, a vertical grain, a vertical razor blade, and just scraping the excess, scraping the excess CA off it, and um, 
There can be no arguments then, it'll be a flush fit to whatever it's gluing to. get the idea. Step 16, draw two lines square with the edge, square with the edge of the carbon strip. They are nine inches apart and centered on the oversized sheet strip. So you're looking for the center of this and then four and a half inches aside. If I'm reading that correctly, you should have about eighth of an inch left at either end. These lines represent the outermost edge of the sheeting. So once I read that, I figured that I could probably just center the oversized sheeting on the plan. And then I put a ruler on the outside ribs and drew my line. And that seems to have done the same thing. If I put the ruler on the line and then draw it with a pencil, the pencil's not very sharp, so it drew an offset line from the ruler. So that's given me a bit to play with. And it says they'll be trimmed off later anyway. So that's, that's yeah, if you, you can go through the whole um, sort of measuring the sheet length, halve it four and a half inches either side draw your lines or I just centered the sheet and the strip on over the plan and then drew some offset lines just outside the ribs let's see how that goes step 17 tape the sheet tightly to the spar assembly as shown note in the second photo the rear edge of the carbon strip butts against the plywood rear spar also note the ends of the spar assembly along with the marks made. So what we've got here is we've got the plywood aligning closely enough. You'll see that one, that one there aligns. Uh, so I aligned at this end and there's some excess there to be taken off later. So I've got the assembly uh, sticky taped tightly. This, this sheeting and uh, carbon stick taped to the spar assembly. And then, using the tape as a hinge, tilt the spar cap assembly away from the sheet far enough to place a bead of medium CA. So we tilt it back, grab some medium CA, Make sure the nozzle's clear, and it's not, so I'll be back shortly. Okay, nozzle clear. So let me fold this back and put a bead of medium along. Yep, and we close it up. I'm hoping we close it up. I assume we close it up. Uh, spar cap, tilt the spar assembly back into position and check that the spar assembly and sheeting remain square to each other while the adhesive sets. Remove any excess adhesive that may squeeze out. Um, yeah, righto. So that... Uh, that looks pretty darn good to me. Pretty darn good to me. God, I hope I've done this to the right. So this is the bottom, right? This is the bottom. So I'm doing the left side. Yes, this is the bottom sheet here. Okay. 
So as good as that looks, I have actually got it 100% wrong. I should have had this down here. So, hmm. Let's see how I go fixing this one. Oops. Okay, so I've managed to salvage the carbon. The balsa sheet has gone a little bit narrower. <clears throat> it used to be that much wider. Um, so, uh, the first thing I did once I'd realized my mistake was go to the other side and, and put either the letter R or the up arrow or both so that I know the the orientation of the part and it, it, it should have it should have dawned on me in the earlier video when I actually slid the slid the parts together and I put them in one way or the other that it was you know for me it was easy to get them upside down so my error, I copped that, but I would certainly consider going forward as soon as you've built them to, to uh, orientate them with markings so you know which one's which. Um, so I might have to use epoxy on this one. I've managed to sort of try and reshape a bit of the, the top which is a bit mangled but anyway it'll be all right it'll be okay so anyway so um getting back to it i'll have to do the old tape and hinge thing here again and redo that one or do that one okay back soon um, up to stage 27 now it's all gone according to plan um i was a little confused as to whether the plywood here sat um, underneath rib A or whether it butted against it but I figured out that it actually goes underneath it so I've made it flush with the outside the, so the edge of the ply is flush with the outside of rib A and that was basically determined by the little notch in the trailing edge there. You'll see it on your rib A. That's how I figured out what I was doing there. And that's all dry assembled at the moment. So I haven't, uh, it's, it's getting late here and, and uh, brain fog is setting in. So I thought I'll just uh, dry assemble it and then I'll put it together tomorrow. Or the next day whenever I get back to it. Um, was there anything else I was going to mention? So oh, I suppose I should at least point out what I've done. So this went all, all together um, fairly quickly, fairly well. Just follow the follow the instructions. Notch out. Where are you? Notch out the ribs. To slide past the alignment pins and the assembly just slides on uh, it looks it appears as though uh, and John or Joe you can confirm this it looks as though the dihedral angle is already cut onto the webs so that when the rib is home it's already set with an angle on it for the dihedral um, other than that, i got to say, the, the thought that's gone into this is, I mean, it's a credit to you both, Don and Joe, it's just amazing. I, I, I'm gobsmacked. I mean, it's been a long time since I've built a kit, and I know laser technology, laser cutting has, has uh, you know, expanded the, the, uh, the opportunities with construction, etc. But this is just so well thought out. I'm very impressed. Okay, um, that'll do for today and um, we'll continue soon. Over and out.